Hi guys, it's Miss Hennebree, and this is our video on probability. So you might be asking, what is probability? Well, I'm going to tell you. Probability is how likely that something will happen based on the outcomes being equally likely. And what that means is, like if you flip a coin, you have an equal chance of getting heads or tails. So you're going to say, how, how likely is it that you're going to get one or the other? Okay, you guys see that all the, the time with lottery is, what or can rolling happen? a dice. When you roll a like dice, that. you can get a 1, 2, a 3, a 4, a 5, or a 6. If you flip a coin, you can get either heads or tails. And if you pick marbles out of a bag, in this example, you could get red, blue, or green. So this is basically everything that is possible to happen. And when you figure out what those outcomes are, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to have something that's called a sample space. Now, I know you guys have heard of this before, and we're not going to really talk a lot about it, but you need to recognize it when you see it. A sample space is basically an organization of all your possible outcomes. One of them would be a tree diagram, where you start off, in this example, I'm saying that you're rolling, a, I'm sorry, tossing a coin. In your first toss, you can get heads or tails. And then you go and say, on, if you got tails the first time, that means that you could get a heads or tails the second time. Right, so on and so forth. So you're just doing yourself an organized, organized way of showing what your outcomes are. The other way is an organized list, which is basically the same thing as the tree diagram, just written a different way. This is a way for you to see all of the possible outcomes so that you can figure out the probability. Okay, now there is actually a formula to probability. It looks kind of fancy, but it's really not. Okay, this P right here, when you're talking about probability, actually means probability. And this E that I have here is just standing for event. So this is saying the probability of this happening. Okay. So to find the probability of something, you're going to take the number of favorable outcomes, which is what you want to happen, and write it as a ratio to the total number of possible outcomes. So an example of that would be tossing a coin. If you toss a coin, you know that your total outcomes is 2, because you can either get heads or tails. Okay, but if you say that you want to get heads, then the number of favorable outcomes is one because you're only going to get heads once when you roll, when you flip the coin. You're not going to get heads and tails. So the probability of getting a heads would be one out of two. The probability of getting tails would be one out of two. Okay, um, so like I said, this is a little bit of a review I think for you guys. So we're going to do just some basic probability problems. Okay, here's we have example two one. That it says that you have a bag that contains three purple marbles, two orange marbles, one black marble, and four silver marbles. Um, they want you to find the probability when choosing at random. Now I had my colors here. I don't think you guys can see them really well. So I replaced silver with green. So this should actually say green. Okay, so what we want to do is this first one, we want to find the probability of orange. So remember, you always want to know your total possible outcomes. How many marbles are in the bag? We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So we have 10 total. Okay, that's very important. You need to know how many total outcomes you can have. So the probability of getting an orange is going to be your total number of favorable outcomes over your total outcomes. If there are one, two orange marbles, okay, and there are ten total, then that means that your probability when you reduce it will be one out of five. So you have a one out of five chance of getting an orange marble. Okay, so let's go ahead and that doesn't work very well. Okay, let's go ahead and do green. So the probability of getting a green is going to be, again, your total, which is 10, and green marbles are 1, 2, 3, 4. So you have a 4 out of 10 chance, which simplifies to 2 fifths. Okay, the second one, sorry guys, you can't see it, is asking you purple or black. So that means you could get one or the other. So the probability of that is going to be, again, your total amount, which is 10. And purple or black means you can get one or the other. So we have one, two, three purples and one black. So there's four total. So you have four out of 10, which is also two out of five. 
Okay, and this last one, it says the probability of it not being purple. So this is actually called um, a complement, which basically means that if it's not purple, then it has to be everything but purple. So if the probability of getting a purple, let's say, is 3 out of 10, then obviously for it not to be purple, right, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 that are not purple, and we still have 10 total. So the probability of getting not purple is going to be 7 out of 10. Okay, let's go ahead and move on to example 2. Okay, here's example 2. Basically this example is that we have a spinner and it's labeled with 8 numbers. So we want to know the probability of a couple things, right? I'm going to give you those those problems here in a second, but just so that you know that on a spinner typically all of the the pie pieces, right, the parts of the spinner are all equal. So that means you have an equally likely chance of landing on any of those numbers. So the first one we want to do is the probability of getting a 6. Okay? So if we have a spinner and it has 8 total parts, that's our total possible, and there's only one 6, so that means you have a 1 out of 8 chance of getting a 6. The second one is we want to know the probability of getting an even number. Okay, we still have 8 total because we haven't changed the amount of things on the spinner, but now we want to know even. So even is 2, 4, 6, and 8. So that gives us 4 out of 8, or 1 half. The third one is the probability of a number that is greater than 8. Okay, so let's think about that. We still have 8 total possible solutions, or sorry, outcomes, but if we want a number that's greater than 8, our largest number is 8, so obviously we can't have a number greater than 8, so that means our probability is 0, which means it is never going to happen. Okay, this next one is the probability that the number is less than 4. Okay, same thing. We've got our 8 total possible outcomes, and a number less than 4 does not include 4, so it would be 3, 2, 1, which is 3 out of 8. Okay, and the last one is the probability of a number that is less than 10. Okay, again, we have 8 possible outcomes. And how many of these numbers are less than 10? All of them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. They're all less than 10. So that means you have an 8 out of 8 chance, which means the probability is 1, which translates to, you guys can't see that, which translates to this is never going to happen, this is always going to happen.